Hi, welcome to the research portion of our show. And with us today is Ralph Turciano. And thank you for that intro. Well, guess what? The first thing we'll start off with is fat. Obviously, you may not be aware there are two different types of fat. There is white fat, which you tend to store, and is usually not seen as being favorable. And there's also something called brown fat, or in this case, they prefer to call it beige fat. Well, the layman term is brown fat. In an article published in the Journal of Pineal Research, pineal, pineal, depends on what you want to call it, they discovered an interesting aspect to something the body produces and something you can consume. If you want to increase the levels of this good fat, why is this fat good, this beige fat or brown fat? is because it helps with the thermogenic ability of the body, meaning raising core body temperature, and also at the same time too, increasing the number of calories you burn. It's the antithesis or the counter, I should say, to white fat. Supposedly the more beige or brown fat you have, the less white fat you end up having. Well, it is melatonin. Melatonin that is consumed. Obviously, your body produces melatonin. Some of you may be aware at night when you go to sleep and things like that, and it helps as far as everything from cancer and so forth, as far as fighting. Well, in vegetables and fruits like mustard, goji berry, almonds, sunflower seeds, cardamom, fennel, coriander, and cherries, particularly tart cherry, they tend to be high in melatonin. And what they discovered in the Journal of Pineal Research out of the University of Granada Institute for Neuroscience they discovered that basically melatonin increases the presence of beige fat. We'll use the word beige from now on since they are pretty much adamant in using the word beige and not brown. And they found out it has metabolic benefits in treating diabetes and hyperlipidemia. They said it is also found in quantities of small fruits and vegetables as we discussed and is pharmacologically, pharmacologically has a safe profile, melatonin. It is a potential useful tool both in its own right and an aid to complement or I should say the treatment of obesity. Yes, they said itself. Melatonin can be actually utilized in the treatment of obesity, meaning without restriction of calories, without basically necessarily changing diet per se, even though it does help, melatonin helps raise that metabolism. A study coordinated by the University of Granada a lecturer, Ahmed Ajil, showed the chronic administration of melatonin, chronic meaning often, sensitizes the thermogenic effect to, or I should say, of the exposure to cold, heightens the thermogenic effect of exercise, meaning you get more bang for your buck when you go to work out, therefore constitutes excellent therapy against obesity, as if obesity is a disease. The fact is that one of the key differences between beige fat, otherwise known to us laymen as brown fat, which appears when administrated melatonin and white fat, is that beige fat cells, or should say beige fat cell mitochondria, expresses levels of a protein called UCP1, responsible for burning calories and generating heat, which makes you wonder, because when your sleep patterns are all messed off, your melatonin levels go, tend to go down. Or if you're a night shift worker, your melatonin levels tend to go down, meaning that lack of sleep and or work shift can be responsible for increasing the likelihood of obesity due to lower levels of melatonin because it's messing with your circadian rhythms and the pineal gland, da 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 And they said, given the importance of this discovery, the researchers are confident they will obtain the funding needed to continue their work. Yeah. We'll see if that happens. However, though, I'm grateful for the University of Granada and the Journal of Pinot Research to bring in the, to our attention the benefits of melatonin as far as a new tool in the fight against obesity. Good work, guys. I appreciate that. And another excellent job. Now, this one I always kind of wonder about because you expect news like this to be in the news. But often I think they utilize words which are too big for the teleprompters and most of these newscasters. And this one's important because it has to do with multiple sclerosis, or MS. 
They discovered or an article titled, Mouse Studies Reveal Promising Vitamin D-Based Treatment for MS. And I mean more than promising. That's why I'm bringing it up. And this was published in the Journal of Neuroimmunology. Pretty respected journal. You'd expect news like this to have made the news somewhere at some time since it came out over a week and a half ago, being this September 30, 2013. Basically, the University of Wisconsin and Madison Biochemist has discovered a promising vitamin D-based treatment that can halt, and this is their words, a reverse the course of the disease in, model, in animal models. The treatment involves, uh, basically, the treatment involves giving animals that exhibit MS symptoms a single dose of a type of vitamin D called calcitriol. Calcitriol. Not or calciferol or calciferol, but calcitriol. It is an active hormone of vitamin D. And followed by the ongoing vitamin D supplements through the diet. The protocol is basically mentioned in the Journal of Neuroimmunology. Again, this is pretty groundbreaking stuff because it should make MS go away. If you're one of the few lucky individuals that actually watch this show, consider yourself fortunate because I was fortunate enough to run across the study itself. And this gives you an idea how powerful the impact is. Now, calcitriol, being the hormone metabolite of vitamin D, is not available without, obviously, a prescription. It's pretty much a pretty hardcore form of vitamin D. They said, but let me go more. This study was funded also by the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. Thank you. The team compared various vitamin D treatments to standard MS drugs. In each case, vitamin D beat every single MS drug that was out there. Mice that received them showed fewer physical symptoms and cellular signs of aging. First, Hayes' team, which is the researcher, compared the effectiveness of a single dose of basically calcitriol to what was comparable dose of glutico uh, glucocorticoid drugs, now administered to MS patients who experienced bad neurological episodes. Calcitriol came out ahead, inducing a nine-day remission in 92% of the animals on average versus a six-day remission in 58% on the glucocorticoid the ah, glutocorticoid drug regime. And guess how much cheaper it is? Think your universal health care coverage is going to mention anything about this? Let's see. All right. Next, Hayes team tried a weekly dose, just to see what's happened. Let's say, give it a little bit more, of the calcitriol. They found that a weekly dose reversed the disease in sustained remission indefinitely. However, Calcitriol is kind of a hardcore drug and can raise calcium levels in the blood pretty significantly. So they wanted to make it and balance it out a little safer. So this is what they did. They said they took away this biological sledgehammer, the calcitriol, and they only gave one dose. Just one dose. And then they followed it with vitamin D supplements. The one-two punch was a runaway success. How successful in treating MS? Well, in their words, 100% response rate. 100% response rate in regards to MS. That's why this should be making TV news. But I guess we're more uh, interested in what Miley Cyrus does on the weekends. Hayes believed that the calcitriol may cause the autoimmune cells attacking the nerve cells myelin coating to die, while the vitamin D prevents the new autoimmune cells from taking their place. So what happens? They give you the calcitriol once, it causes them to die. The vitamin D supplements, which you can pick up in any health food store, keeps them away. Now, interesting thing that the researchers said, which I really like towards the end, and they said, it is my hope that one day doctors will be able to say, we're going to give you this, we are going to give you an oral calcitriol dose, vitamin D, the hormone vitamin D, and ramp up with the vitamin D in your diet. And then we're going to follow you closely over the next few months. You're just going to have one more neurological episode, and then there'll be the end of it. That is my dream. That's what the doctor said who did the research on that. That's a pretty spectacular dream. Again, this happened in the news a few weeks ago. Let's see if it, I should say not news, I should say research. Let's see if it makes it to any local news channels or national news channels. It'd be pretty interesting to see. However, again, while I look back in 2004, there was an interesting article on curcumin or turmeric 
in regards to reversing cystic fibrosis. And still to this day, 2004, nine years later, haven't seen one iota of it. I think my time is about up. Is that correct? 30 seconds? Yep, sounds good. And thank you very much for the time and hope to see you guys next time. Thank you very much, Ralph. Once again, thank you for joining our show. Do your research and as you hear things like on turmeric and, and the vitamin D, let your friends know. Share it with your doctors. Hopefully, maybe it'll make a difference with them. Have a great night. Thank you very much for joining our show.